Uh, it's uh, 1 o'clock p.m. in uh, Los Angeles on Wednesday, the 9th of May, 2012. It's uh, 10 p.m. in Bamberg, Germany, where I'm about to yes. speak to Martin Hasse, who is a uh, professor of linguistics at the University of Bamberg and an active member of the Pirate Party of Germany. Welcome, Professor, Bam professor uh, Hasse, to uh, our show. Yeah, thank you. Uh, tell us uh, briefly about your day job as chairman of the Department of Romance Languages there at the University of Bamberg. Yeah, well, I'm teaching linguistics, <coughs> Romance linguistics, so the linguistics of French, Spanish, and Italian. And, uh, yeah, so that's what I did today. <laughs> I had some students to prepare the exam um, <coughs> this morning and this afternoon. And, uh, yeah, so that's my day job, and I do research in Romance linguistics on uh, language contact, mainly. So contact between Romance and non-Romance languages. Uh, yeah, so that's what I do uh, <clears throat> every day. Okay, good. You're also active in the Pirate Party. Tell us a, a brief history of the Pirate Party and how it came to Germany. Yeah, it came from Sweden to Germany in 2006. It was founded in Germany in 2006. Um, but the, th the first couple of years were rather quiet. So there were about 70 or 80 members. Uh, and it changed in 2009 when, uh, um, well, before the, the, the federal elections in 2009, because um, then the uh, uh, leading parties wanted to introduce um, Internet censorship. Um, and there was a great uprise against Internet censorship and that's when uh, quite a number of people got interested in the Pirate Party. The Pirate Party got 1.8% uh, <clears throat> in the um, European elections in 2009, and later on in the federal elections, 2.8%, which is not much, <clears throat> but still the Pirate Party became visible at that time, and then uh, a lot of uh, new members joined the party, and... Uh, yeah, in 2011, last year, <coughs> it got 8.9% in the Berlin elections, so in the elections of the <coughs> federal state of Berlin, and um, <coughs> so 15 pirates entered the Berlin parliament, and that was, of course, a great success. And after that, um, <coughs> a lot of interest was stirred, uh, and there were a lot of uh, <coughs> media repercussions in Germany, um, and uh, uh, in the uh, elections um, that took place this year, uh, um, <coughs> two elections already for uh, state um, state parliaments. The Pirate Party was uh, got uh, always around eight percent, which is quite a big success for a new party, because before that, uh, no new party got uh, so much support in their first appearance for uh, elections, as the Pirate Party did. Tell us what the policy goals of the Pirate Party are. The policy go uh, goals are, first of all, uh, free Internet. <clears throat> so, um, um, a free Internet which is not censored. So, that was one of the main issues in 2009. And, of course, net neutrality. And then another big issue is uh, a new form of uh, um, democracy, or let's say more democracy, some sort of compromise between grassroots democracy and representative democracy. Because nowadays in Germany uh, we have a representative uh, parliamentary system where um, <coughs> there are elections every four or five years. And... Um, <coughs> What the Pirate Party uh, uh, wants to install is a system, and which, which it has installed within its party already, is a system called liquid democracy, um, <clears throat> where um, you can delegate people, but you can always revoke the delegation. So there's always the possibility to change the representatives, so to speak, uh, and to get delegations on special issues, you can get global delegations, you can have global delegations as well, but all delegations are revocable. And that means that uh, um, whenever you um, 
uh, are not satisfied with uh, what your delegate says, you can have a new delegate or you can uh, vote yourself. And uh, this approach is, as I said, a compromise between grassroots democracy where everybody votes on everything and representative democracy where you have representatives that vote for you. So this is an in-between way, but which is a very good compromise because then um, if you don't feel easy about uh, some decisions, you can always delegate them. And if you don't have enough time, you can have delegations. But if you want to take part in a vote yourself, you can always do it. So there's always the possibility of grassroots participation, but you don't have to, to uh, get involved with everything. So this uh, form of compromise between grassroots uh, and uh, representative democracy uh, is quite a new approach. So it's called liquid democracy, and the Pirate Party uses this uh, within the party for the development of uh, well, programs, party programs. But of course, um, the idea is to introduce such a system on a, uh, on a state level in the end. But this is, uh, well, of course, you cannot do that uh, at once. You first of all have to, 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 to do it within your party and to have more direct in <clears throat> involvement of party members, um, and then perhaps after some time, after a lot of time, you can introduce such things within the parliamentary system itself. First of all, the pirate party has to have some influence to change the laws, of course. So the idea is that the liquid democracy that's practiced within the party will eventually spread to the parliamentary uh, process itself? Yes. First of all, it will spread to other parties, and uh, other parties have become very interested in this approach. And in the end, of course, someday, uh, well, there has to be a broader consensus, of course, uh, then uh, you can uh, spread it to the parliamentary system itself. Now, this is a big breakthrough. That for hundreds of years, people in Europe and elsewhere have been struggling to find a form of democracy that, that's both um, representative and participatory. Do you think that this yeah. liquid democracy is a, a, a solution to this problem at last? Yes, this is a solution for this problem. And I think uh, <clears throat> we have already shown within the processes within the party that uh, it works, and that's why other parties in Germany became interested and have adopted uh, similar systems. And of course, private, uh, pirate parties in other countries have started to use that system too. So I think... Uh, uh, it's on a good way. So, uh, so you you don't mind if the social democrats or the uh, the free democrats uh, 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 adopt your uh, uh, liquid democracy uh, approach? No, of course not. They are all invited to to do that, and they are also invited to to copy other ideas of our program if they want to, because uh, that would be a success for us. Of course, okay, and it would be. Okay. A better world, because if you have a more direct approach to democracy, it's uh, <clears throat> it's fruit for everybody. Okay, H how does the system of liquid democracy that you're using more accurately and uh, successfully reflect modern technology and modern society better than previous systems? Now, yeah, <laughs> we now have computers and the internet, and everybody can get involved. Uh, in former times, this was not possible. You have to remember that our uh, parliamentary system comes from the 18th century, where people uh, had to go to a capital to vote and to take part in parliamentary action, and it always took a lot of time. You had to have to, to elect representatives who could afford to go to this place and take part in the process. And now you just switch on your computer and can get involved with other people. So uh, the idea, well, the the the, the <coughs> The idea is to use this, to use the Internet to have this direct participation uh, because space and time, well, uh, has reduced. You can really um, <clears throat> go back to the foundations of democracy in, uh, in Athens. Um, people, uh, well, all uh, <clears throat> townsmen could uh, get together in one place. And now you can do that in the Internet. So why not use this opportunity to have a more direct democracy? Why is this taking place more in Germany than, say, the United States? Well, that's a difficult question. That's a difficult question. 
it's taking place in Germany because uh, we had this um, um, well, we had this problems in 2009 with uh, uh, our leading parties um, that wanted to have this internet censorship, and this pressure perhaps hasn't happened in the United States, and that's perhaps why uh, people um, didn't have this. Uh, um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, this reason to get uh, involved and to stand up for new ideas, perhaps. It may happen now with the Occupy movement or other mu movements that even people in the United States uh, <coughs> uh, come to realize that something has to change. But I think um, uh, with this pressure in 2009, with an uh, imminent law that uh, I was planned to, to censor uh, the Internet, um, that was really the starting point why uh, there was so much interest, especially in Germany. Uh, say something about how people earn delegations. Why do some people de why? why do some people delegate, and and who gets these delegations most? Yeah, well, <clears throat> it's uh, some sort of what well, one could call it meritocracy. So people who who uh, <clears throat> have earned some merits within the community. Um, more easily get uh, delegations. So people who have already proposed interesting things usually get uh, get delegations. So uh, <clears throat> so um, I think uh, it's very important in such a system that you are open, that you use your <clears throat> name, um, and that you uh, present yourself, that people can imagine who you are, and can uh, and then there's some some sort of web of trust, and then people uh, tend to delegate to those people who are already very active. So activity is a good key to get um, uh, to get delegations and uh, <clears throat> oh well um, if, if you aren't very active or if you don't want to, to, to um, <clears throat> show your real name it may be that people won't uh, <clears throat> have enough trust in you and won't delegate to you. So the, the important thing is trust, of course. How, how successful have you been in, in getting these delegations? Well, I've been particularly successful because people, um, well, the, the point is that I did, uh, that I started, well, already in 2009, I started to, to work out um, uh, issues for the program of the party, and I started a uh, podcast on party issues and very many party members and not only party members very many people listen to these podcasts and came to know me and that's why when we started with Liquid Feedback in 2010 um, <clears throat> it, uh, well, it was uh, I was immediately uh, somebody who was known to others and that's why I got uh, some delegations in the first place and then, of course, other people saw that people they trusted delegated to me, so they too um, delegated to me, and that's why I got over 100 uh, delegations in a very short time. And that was, of course, uh, for me, a point to uh, <clears throat> get even more involved, because that was some sort of... Uh, well, that showed me that uh, um, <clears throat> people uh, felt good about what I did, and uh, I got even more involved and, and did more things, and yeah, that's how it came. Okay. Okay. How does the system work in terms of pr 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 proposals of policy and discussion and voting? Yeah, well, it's, uh, <clears throat> uh, it's actually very easy. <clears throat> Every party member can uh, make a proposal, but then in order to get discussed, this proposal has to have, to have some support from other people. Um, <clears throat> there has uh, to be, well, <clears throat> um, there are um, theme groups, and you can uh, <clears throat> say that you are interested in a special, uh, in, in, in some, or all, even all theme groups. And in order to get uh, something into discussion, 10% of the people who are uh, <clears throat> interested in that theme group have to support your idea. So there's a certain uh, <coughs> quorum, so to speak. So uh, if you get these 10% of support, then uh, the discussion starts. So there are a lot of people who just want to, to put forward 
uh, for fund proposals, and these fund proposals just get, don't get these 10 percent, so <clears throat> they are not discussed. So if uh, uh, a proposal gets this minimum support of 10 percent of uh, people interested in that uh, subject area, then um, the discussion starts, the discussion takes place outside the system, but within the system you can make um, <clears throat> amendment proposals. You can say, well, I, if you change something in your proposal, I will vote for it. Um, <clears throat> and then other people can say, oh, that's a good idea. I will vote for that too if you change it. And then <clears throat> the person who did the, the original initiative um, might change his initiative, and then he gets more support. So <clears throat> within the process of discussion, the um, <clears throat> the uh, proposal changes. Um, and people make proposals, and the original uh, <clears throat> uh, people, uh, the, the original person who put forward this proposal, changes his proposals according uh, according to these amendment proposals. And then <clears throat> in the, the end, the, this process takes some time. Let's say uh, for, uh, two weeks. Two weeks. And after these two weeks, there is a period <coughs> where nothing can be changed. <coughs> this period is meant for people who are still not satisfied to put forward an alternative proposal. <coughs> and then in the end, well, this alternative proposal again has to get some support. And in the, in the end, after another week or so, there's the final uh, voting <coughs> where Everybody can vote on these, uh, on this proposal, on the alternative proposal. Even there can be several alternatives, and people can rank the alternatives. So it's uh, a vote by, uh, <coughs> yeah, um, what do you call it? Um, it's an acceptance vote. So you don't just have to say um, this is good or this is bad, but you can say this is better than the other thing. And uh, in the end, uh, one proposal is the best or shows out to be the best or is the <coughs> Uh, is the proposal uh, which is voted for most, and this proposal wins in the end. And that, then that becomes the party policy. And that becomes the party policy. Well, actually, that's, that's another difficult thing. Within the uh, Berlin chapter of the party, um, <coughs> these proposals have uh, <coughs> um, a very important status because... Um, um, within the statutes of the Berlin chapter, um, the system, the, the, which is called liquid feedback, is mentioned, and proposals are, <clears throat> um, well, are already accepted policy. Whereas uh, on the German level of the party, um, these proposals are only recommendations. And then um, <clears throat> uh, at the party meeting, um, there has to be uh, another vote. Um, for this uh, proposal. It's only a recommendation to the party meeting, and the party meeting has, has the final word on these proposals. Um, <clears throat> so there's a difference between the Berlin chapter, which is, let's say, more progressive, and the uh, party as a whole, the federal party, where people are, <clears throat> well, have been more hesitant to um, use the system, so uh, there's always the necessity to have a final vote on a party meeting. Okay, good. Um, talk about the future of the Pirate Party. Where is it contesting new elections? Yeah, well, the next elections uh, will be the elections in North Rhine Australia, which is the biggest federal um, It's going to take place next Sunday, so in a few days. And uh, <clears throat> there again, um, we hope that the Pirate Party will get about 8% and will uh, be part of the state parliament in North Australia. And then probably next year, but perhaps even earlier, if there is a governmental crisis. But at the latest next year, in uh, <clears throat> September, there will be the federal elections. And this, this is, of course, very important because that will hopefully in the moment when the pirate, uh, pirate party will enter the federal um, <clears throat> parliament and then play a role at the federal level. Because so far, <laughs> the pirate party is only in state parliaments, but then next year it will hopefully be part of the federal parliament. Uh, but already, of course, 
the Pirate Party has some impact on uh, what is going on because uh, <clears throat> on newspapers, on television, uh, people speak a lot about the Pirate Party's ideas and uh, there's already some influence because, as I've told you, other parties have got interested in uh, um, liquid feedback, the program that the Pirate Party uses for liquid democracy, and uh, <clears throat> there's lots of experimenting, uh, ex exper <clears throat> experimenting already within other parties, and uh, I think that's already a big success. Although the Pirate Party is not yet a member of the federal parliament. T tell us, in your words, what the spirit of the Pirate Party is. Yeah, the spirit is um, freedom, of course. Freedom uh, plays a very important role within the Pirate Party, um, <clears throat> um, especially the freedom of information, um, that you can get information from all sources. Um, I think that's uh, very important. But it's not only... <clears throat> Freedom, but it's also um, there's also a social aspect to it because the Pirate Party um, <clears throat> is very much um, advocating um, uh, an approach to society uh, which is called the fundamental income, um, where every citizen should get uh, a minimum uh, sum of money every month. Um, uh, in order to, yeah, in order to to <clears throat> be uh, safe from uh, social and or financial problems, um, so this first of all seems to be a bit. Uh, it's almost for some people it seems to be communism that the state pays everybody, <laughs> but that's not the case. It's not really communism. It's uh, actually some sort of liberal approach because. Uh, the problem now is that people that, that uh, um, uh, don't have an, a regular income and get into uh, <clears throat> trouble because they don't have enough money, um, they have to go to uh, uh, <clears throat> some welfare office of the state, have to apply for financial support, and this is uh, <clears throat> very painful because they have to... to uh, tell um, the, the administration of the welfare office uh, everything about their, their life uh, um, and, and so on. Uh, and the idea of this fundamental income is that there is less bureaucracy and that there are no bureaucratic decisions, but they simply <coughs> um, that you simply get a certain amount of money. And if you have a regular income from some job, this is just uh, <coughs> taken off your taxes uh, so that people who already earn money don't get money, but people who need it get the money, and then there's no no really no no real uh, necessity for an administrative decision. So actually, this is another aspect of uh, of freedom and of uh, um, uh, minimizing bureaucracy uh, uh, without urging people to to go to, to go to a welfare office and uh, have. Uh, <coughs> Um, and have their private lives inquired in order to get financial support. Um, I did an interview a few days ago with Klaus Sambor, who is organizing a European citizens initiative to do the unconditional basic income. So are the pirates going to support that initiative? Um, yeah, well, the Pirate Party uh, um, takes part in this uh, uh, initiative, yes. Okay, there's also an initiative that would have people sing the, the European national anthem in Esperanto. Do you think that's a good idea? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. So Esperanto is uh, <clears throat> actually a good solution to uh, uh, the language problem that we have. Of course, just singing a hymn uh, is perhaps not uh, <laughs> enough uh, in order to communicate in Esperanto, you have to learn it. But I think this is certainly a good idea. Give us a taste of Esperanto. Tell us why singing the hymn in Esperanto would be a good idea. Tell us in Esperanto. I've never heard it spoken. Oh. No, la mi canti hymn in Esperanto. Eble estas bona simbola afero, sed plej grave estas ke oni lernu Esperanton, char tiam Esperanto povas esti tuj utila. Ki tuj povas esti en kontakto kun aliaj homoj, 
eh, en la tuta mundo que tiene do profiti de recta y contacto eh, de homo al homo. I, I almost understood most of that. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Okay, good. Well, I want to thank you very much. I hope we can talk again sometime after the uh, the next elections and uh, possibly when the uh, pirates are going to enter into the federal government. And uh, uh, good luck. And uh, I hope we'll talk again. Yes, thank you. And goodbye. Goodbye.